Coffee cups at the ready. <laughs> okay, morning. Hopefully the uh, volume is okay. We will find out momentarily as soon as somebody pops in here. And uh, welcome to Coffee with Panda. We've been wanting to do this for quite a while. Um, I've got two monitors and my camera's kind of in the middle. So if I'm looking off to the side, it's because I'm trying to make sure that we're... <laughs> in view and it's and it's always kind of odd i've been live streaming for over a year now and we've both been teaching online for almost two years and it's a little bit of an odd dynamic to sit and talk to a camera <laughs> so you have to remember that you your eyes have to go over here so we're going to be adjusting and tweaking and playing with things and so I am Anna Maria Salvaggio, otherwise known as Ren Melian, and Val Michael Salvaggio. Good morning. <laughs> and this is my husband, Val, who uh, I drug in here partially, <laughs> not not really kicking and screaming. We, we've been wanting to do this for a while, but um, he is definitely not used to uh, being live except for voice because we do family game nights uh, on my Twitch channel on Wednesday nights. So, but we, what are we doing this morning? Is this Cafe Bustelo or is this? Cafe Bustelo. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to be trying different coffees. We're going to be talking about books. We're going to be um, basically just hanging out and I've got some prompts too. And we've got our books here. And so if you guys have any uh, questions, about anything feel free to to post them we are i had a couple people message me they were like hey what are you doing today uh <laughs> it's like hmm let me see i'm going live so we've got a few people that are going to pop over but i am making sure that everybody knows we're on So work in progress, obviously, this is our first uh, stream together. We've not actually done this before, um, though we are both used to being online. So um, some of this stuff we're going to talk about, books, what we're reading, what games we're playing, uh, some of the stuff that we've seen mm -hmm. online. Um, I do have kind of a list of things that we can talk about. Um, but uh, I know a lot of things that I've seen going on right now, um, people, because of the season, are looking for um, spooky reads. So what's your what's your top? Because I know horror isn't necessarily spooky. your genre. Yeah. It depends. How spooky is the medieval period for most of you? <laughs> I do have one yeah, that's that what is he's reading, but... a little bit, uh, well, they're both very fantasy medieval. This is actually historical darker. fiction. Yeah. Well, yeah, let me pull well, that read off it. of there because yeah, the cover is not yet. exactly safe. Uh, this is Medieval Underworld. Oh, you can share. Uh, you can hold that up yeah. if you need to. Yeah. This is Medieval Underworld, and this is by Andrew McCall, and it talks about the punitive system during the medieval period, uh, which, and how, you know, small towns and things were arranged, organized, how the uh, deputy system worked in a, in a town or village and how it went up the scale from there. And it's just very fascinating because you don't usually include that kind of thing in like your Dungeons and Dragons game and things like that. So yeah. uh, let alone the punishments that come for things like theft and all the other things yeah. that come along with crime so now, did um, you know it was about that when you when you picked it up or oh yes okay oh yes this was recommended to me by one of the uh, youtube dungeon master uh advice uh guys that i love watching uh, uh dungeon craft or... uh, yes dungeon craft professor dungeon master on dungeon craft yeah. and he's reading that he reads a lot of like history and things like that that the titles always catch my eye. I go, I look at them and I'm like, I am bookmarking that one for later because he just, he, he'll read like this history, you know, 
and which is fantastic. And then he has a, an, a fun way of being able to put it into um, his his gaming system, his game world. So, uh, and he but he game masters for like youth groups and things too. So a lot of the people that he's game mastering for are probably no, no older than yeah, seventeen probably. or eighteen years old. So being able to kind of talk to somebody and go, oh, you're going to do that. Go right ahead. And then all of a sudden <laughs> the authorities are coming after yeah. them. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, but that was, that's the, the uh, historical fiction that I'm reading. I'm about, just lost my place. I'm about a hundred pages or so, 120 pages into that book. It's very good. Well, that's, that was bookmarking it. Yeah. <laughs> right Oops. now though, the uh, fantasy that I'm reading is a very well-known series, actually. Uh, it is uh, Gardens of the Moon. Gardens of the Moon. If any of you are huge fantasy readers, this is the Malazan series by Steven Erickson. There are, just in the first story for this, there are 10 novels. <laughs> And I'm about 170 pages into the first one. So, but those 170 pages I've read in about three nights of an hour to two hours each. So, uh, that is fast for me. So, yeah. I'll um, get really I'll get that. into uh, I get into my yeah. spooky read here in a second. But um, spooky reads recommendations. But uh, speaking of large series, how many are in that one? This one. Yeah. There are ten in that one, and then there are like prequel storyline novels usually okay. numbering two or three at a time okay. just for context <laughs> i've just started reading this one there's 14 <clears throat> of these and uh if you like sci-fi this is the book series for the expanse TV show that's on Netflix. Netflix. It's on Arizona or Arizona. On Amazon. Amazon is it Amazon? Amazon? I think uh, so. I think the newer season's on Amazon. But it, if you're that's right, they're on Amazon. If you're a Firefly fan, which I'm, I gotta keep. I gotta move that camera because I keep looking over here. Um, actually, we'll just kind of solve that right now and move it over to my other monitor. There. So I'm at least looking in the same direction. <laughs> But um, I just started reading this. I'm enjoying it. Uh, James S.A. Corey, uh, Leviathan Wakes. This is the first of 14. Um, and is actually two authors. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, I'm really enjoying this. The, ser the TV series is awesome. Um, if you're a big Firefly fan, a lot of the Firefly fans, a lot of my brown coats um, really enjoy the expanse. Um, the six seasons, how many seasons? Six, I think. Yeah, I think six seasons. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's six. And I think the sixth one is coming, coming out, out in December. Is I it think. December? Yeah. Okay. December's got a few a short while away, but to, not long. Yeah, I'll have to check. Mm -hmm. But um, so my spooky reads, though, um, I would recommend, and I don't have them in front of me, is uh, Graveminder by Melissa Marr. Um, and I will actually type that into chat here. Um, I had posted about them on... Twitter yesterday. The Graveminder by Melissa Moore. Um, anything by Owl Going Back. My favorite um, of his. It was an old friend of yours. Broda. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Breed. Um, Crota was actually up against Stephen King for the Bram Stoker Award um, a few years back when it came out. And uh, he's been trying to get it published as a graphic novel. Um, so they're working on that. But he's also got a couple other um, books out that... Let me take a look here. 
I actually wrote a children's book at one point. Oh, a really? Of, a couple of them, yeah. <laughs> they weren't horror. They weren't horror, um, horror books or anything. But uh, yeah, Coyote Rage is the other one. Um, oh. Bram Stoker Award winner for best novel in 2019. Um, he actually did get the Bram Stoker Award for best first novel for Crota. For Crota. Okay. Um, fiction collection Tribal Screams. And uh, he's part of the Authors Guild as well, but he's um, he's pretty amazing, and he's just an all-around fabulous person. He's one of my favorite people. Um, met him at him and his family at um, Chambers down in Florida, the okay. Indigenous Gathering. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that's when we found out Issa was my drum baby. <laughs> I used to get in the ring and dance <laughs> um, because they would have it open to the public if you wanted to. And uh, at certain points. And I remember my mom making a comment that it was scaring her. And I'm like, no, I actually watch her because when I got in the ring, I would take her after I had Issa, I would take her in the ring with me and she'd just start flailing. I mean, just she would get so excited at the drums. Um, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> drum baby. Cause I played, cause I play drums. And uh, in fact, I need to get another one. I haven't done that in a long time. Cause I, have you not had one for a long time? No, the do back when we first moved here, okay. I had actually, cause the, you just have the one hand drum. Yeah. I've got the one hand drum. Okay. Um, yeah. I've thought about getting a boron which is the big Celtic drum. Oh, I know what those are. But I want to wait until yeah. I have a house. Because I, want... yeah. <laughs> I don't want to freak the neighbors out trying to, you can't really muffle that a whole lot. Um, but uh, but yeah, Owl's going, Owl Going Back's books are fabulous. Um, he had, he's finally on Facebook. He battled forever mm -hmm. to prove that that was his actual name. Um, and they wouldn't let him on Facebook <laughs> with it. So he finally, finally got on Facebook. Um, but he's owlgoingback.com. Um, and uh, like I said, he's super cool. I've known him for, good Lord, almost 20 years. Almost 20 years now. But he is a master at his craft. Um, but, uh, Melissa Marr was the other horror genre, because horror genre is not necessarily something I, I read very read. little horror. And I like I, some zombie stuff, but not like, I'm not, I, yeah, I don't even read that, but, yeah. um, a long time ago, I read five or six Stephen King novels like yeah, in yeah, high school King, yeah. and Thinner. those are those are really the only ones that i've read that i have any knowledge of mm -hmm. because i've read them yeah um but the first one i started with was needful things mm -hmm. and That's that is an amazing story um pet cemetery was the second one i read i think i saw pet, pet cemetery, cemetery will touch you at different times in your life depending on your age yeah it's one of those kinds of stories where if you're you're young, like a teenager, it's just horrifying. Mm -hmm. And when you're an adult and you reread it and you think about being a parent yeah. <laughs> and then being in that situation as a parent, mm -hmm. there's a whole different band of horror that comes yeah. with that one. <laughs> so so you can read that here. book multiple times in your life at various stages. And it's different mm -hmm. each time you read it. It's I just, think that's true with most books. Because I know there's yeah. some books that I've reread that I have a different perspective based on my age or what I'm going through in my life. Or, you know, because mm -hmm. triggers are always different. Um, you know, things that will trigger memories that I had in the past or triggers I'm making now or current events or, you know. So there's, like I said, I think that's that's true with with most books um some of the other stuff that i'm 
been into uh that's not horror i don't think it's horror genre um i just saw it go by on twitter the other day that it's the 10 year anniversary of uh aaron morgenstern's night circus so night circus was one of remember we went to remember we went to we went to georgia and the Mm -hmm. the first exit from florida into georgia there's that three dollar three dollar all books three dollars and it's an, it was an oh interesting place because it was kind of like a warehouse. And when you went inside, they just had like the equivalent to like those six or eight foot church tables. Yeah. And they just had the books stacked up in layers. Out in the walls. And you had to dig. In the walls them. too, because they don't have, they'll have stuff by loose alphabetical yeah. order. Yeah. But you could, everything is face out on the wall and you have to look through behind books Mm-hmm. because they're just like, okay, this is the A section. We're putting all the A authors over here. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're, you know, mm-hmm. um, alphabetical <laughs> from that point. Um, so, you know, if you know covers or if you know, um, you know, vaguely what their last name is, then you just start digging. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. But hard covers are all $3. So we mm-hmm. went in, good mm-hmm. Lord, we spent, <laughs> we walked out with a bunch of stuff. Um, some of them was, you get for like 99 cents or something. There were a few things. And I want to say that, I, I, I want to say Night Circus, I want to say yeah. Night Circus was, I know it was one of the ones I picked up, but I think I only paid like a dollar for it, yeah. which was yeah, awesome. Was maybe I love, um, I think the sticker's still on that one. Yeah. It's, it's, well, in, that a big, couple of it's in that big bookcase. Yeah. The one you just bought recently. Yeah, I've got yeah. a couple of copies, but it's mm-hmm. um it's funny because when we were moving from Florida to here, um, hey Keto. Toes mom, hi. Hey sweetheart, how are you? Happy happy spooky season. <laughs> Spoopy. <laughs> how have you been? It's so good to see you. We're just sitting here chilling and chatting about books right now. We're we were talking about uh, the Expanse TV show <laughs> a minute ago. I finally drug him on camera to do to do stuff with me. So, but uh, it's good to see you snuggling the towel. <laughs> Very cool. Mine is still in bed. <laughs> So it's like, by the way, we're getting on live camera, so don't wander into the kitchen. And it was kind of like, uh. <laughs> but go doggo. Oh, cool. Very cool. So what have you been up to? Ask us questions. We're, we're doing the books and music and art and all sorts of stuff. So I'm telling you the bad. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I usually... Um, I usually teach 10, 12, 2, and 4. And I actually, since COVID, have not listed any classes before noon because um, I'm still post-COVID dealing with the fatigue. And it's a lot more manageable now. But I was sleeping like 22 hours a day. I'd get up, eat, and go back to bed. Um, Or even sit up in bed, eat, and (laughs) lay back down. And your body pretty much is just like, nope, you're not doing it. You're going to go take a nap. You're going to go do it right now. Because if you don't, then I can vouch for that one. you're going to fall over and then nobody can pick you up. Because, yeah. So, digging a 10 foot by, I think, 30 foot patio. Oh, awesome. Hey, Oliver. How are you doing today? Good morning. But, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty, we've got a nine by nine terrace. Um, and it's cozy, but are you going to put in a fire pit? Please tell me you're going to put in a fire pit. (laughs) (laughs) That's, that's my thing is eventually, um, we're in an apartment now. I eventually want a house that I can install hooks so I can just change out lights all year round Christmas and, um, Halloween, I'd probably have orange lights and I'm going to be that person that's going to have like a couple of bins of decorations for not all the holidays, definitely, definitely Christmas and, and Halloween, 
but this is my time of year, dude. I'm like October, late September, because our wedding anniversary, we just celebrated 10 years at the end of September. Um, and uh, the uh, he's been putting up with me that long. And then um, like mid-September to like February, when the weather gets cooler, I love it. Can you hear us okay? Let me know. I'm so, so worried for my son. That's awful. I'm glad you made it. Yeah, I think, um, I know the vaccines they've started rolling out uh, for the kids, but I don't know what age. Um, and we have one, but we have to get rid of it. Just, We're going to have an above ground pet. Yeah. I just, no, read, totally an, get I just it. read the headline this morning. Pfizer is trying to get. Uh, FDA approval for, I think it's ages five to 11 right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's kind of in the works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the fire pit safety thing is a thing. Fire pits and pools. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I had a pool when I was about eight years old and he, yeah, he's too, there had, he's there not had vaxxed. To be... He's too, he's two years old. Mm -hmm. So he's not vaxxed yet. Yeah. It's while well, we don't, we go for the post office, um, because they're constantly, I mean, it smells sterile in there. They are constantly sanitizing stuff. And, um, the, um, grocery pickup. So other than that, we really haven't gone anywhere. In fact, we hadn't, we actually, when we were pre COVID, cause I got sick. Um, we both got sick February and I tested mm -hmm. positive for three months. So, um, it just, I value my freedom and being able to leave the house. <laughs> yeah. They're doing five and up. I taught, I was fire. Oh, 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 my tot loves the fire and terrifying because he gets so close to the pit. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm a fire bug. My daughter is too. Um, in fact, forever, she wouldn't, I wouldn't let her do candles or anything until she was like 16, something like that. Cause it was just like, no, I don't think you need that in there. So, but, um, actually she was probably 13 when I first, when I finally was like, okay, matches are okay. <laughs> it's too paranoid. We're in a paper household. We have too many, um, have too many, uh, books and, paper artists. So there's paper supplies and everything. So, you know, fire, we're just going to be careful with that. So, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely on the, the radar because I love fire pits. And I used to, when I was in the SCA for 15 years, that's one of the big things I miss is we had a six foot in diameter bonfire in the middle of our encampment. And, uh, we actually had an event one time where uh, one of our guys was a firefighter. And so we brought our Christmas trees, our dead Christmas trees to the 12th night celebration. And I think we put like six trees on it at one point. And that was, that was the thing. So 40 foot flames shot up. We had a clearing, so we didn't have any of the, the trees there. It still wasn't probably the smartest thing we could have ever done. Um, but there was another firefighter that was on campsite down the other end. Uh, Cause we used to do um, we camp. We were in Apopka, Florida, and it's a boy scout camp that they would rent out to different events and everything. So he sees these flames shoot up above the tree and hauls down to our encampment. And he gets there at the gate and he's like, Oh, it's you. <laughs> So, but we used to joke around that it's like, you're not in the Mongol encampment if somebody's not messing with the fire every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you should eventually build a matching brick fire pit. Oh, that'd be cool. By digging my hand and putting in the new concrete pad for and laying the brick padding on myself. Oh, nice. Watching the tot. It's what I'm getting done. That's awesome. Yeah, winter is coming. Pumpkin spice is here. <laughs> but winter is coming and I cannot wait for it this year. I'm... I'm so jonesing for, yeah. for Christmas and for, I don't know if we'll get any traveling in or anything, but you ride around and look at the lights and mm -hmm. drag mom out. 
of her four walls and we can get the car out this year <laughs> yeah <laughs> we like two three weeks straight with it was frozen i off. couldn't get it the frozen the doors were frozen <laughs> i poured hot water and i poured it yeah just no winter in minnesota can literally start today <laughs> You guys get crazy winters, though. How cold does it get there? Now, we've gotten negative two. Oh, yeah. Negative five? No. I think the coldest was negative eight. That was a couple of years. I think that was our first winter that was, here. Yeah, something. Five years ago. It was whatever, one of the years we went wassailing. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one thing. Um, negative 30? Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh -uh. I don't. I, mm, I don't know. I don't have the clothes for that. <laughs> That's the biggest problem with me with the lymphedema. Finding clothes is horrible. Um, but uh, yeah, that's one of the things that solidified the holidays here for me. Um, I had an Arctic blast that was colder than that, that lasted for weeks. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The, what it feels like versus what it is. So what it feels like is, is mm -hmm. the dangerous part. Um, and if there's any kind of humidity, just, no. but yeah, I, I'm a snow girl. I love all the cold. Bring it. I'm all there for that. So my body does not do well for with heat. It was 88 degrees on Christmas day, 98% humidity. And that was 2015. And I was like, Nope, I'm moving. We're gone. I'm nope. We're leaving. <laughs> Crazy part is that it totally felt colder when it was like five, negative five. Yeah. Yeah. It just depends. I think the humidity is the biggest part. But um one of the things they do here in January, which they haven't been able to do it for the last couple of years, they actually do a wassail tour. Um, where it's um you bring your own mug. And you, there's usually about nine houses on the list and they are just spreads of homemade food. Um, cause they're a big green community, farm to table community here. Um, they've got Berea college, which is the, uh, free college and they are in the top 10, um, organic college farms in the U S and so there's a, a farm store and it's awesome they have farmers market twice a week um we're down to once a week because the weather's getting cooler but um all the people that are farmers or work for farmers or grow their own food or anything they're making food they're making homemade wassail um mulled wine usually the alcoholic stuff is the, the last house <laughs> because they don't want people driving around um jams and jellies but yeah but it's basically homemade bread <laughs> uh, yeah so um you bring your own mug and you basically go to the door you sing a traditional wassailing song and the person lets you in you eat till you can't move and then you go you take them and go to the next house and so you spend the whole day just house hopping and eating and eating and house hopping. And then you get to this big, you know, party where there's caroling and there's, you know, people bring their instruments and I mean, just all sorts of stuff at the, the last house on the list. And it is amazing. It is so cool. I want to say the last one usually is the one that actually puts on like the dinner size banquet. Like yeah. the one that's like, if everybody showed up there, there's enough food for everybody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just <laughs> big old, huge pot of like loaded, leaded wassail and um, just so good. So good. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, so that's like one of our favorite things to do for the holidays. Um, but yeah, the cooler weather, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I want to get a house too, because I want to be able to do when we can um, do the trick or treater thing. Cause I, that was one of my favorite things growing up was um, trick or treating and handing out 
candy to the kids and stuff. And I know you did you get I know you guys did big stuff for Christmas because you and your dad would do the whole carpentry thing in the oh, front. No, my neighborhood was one of those neighborhoods that two or three of the houses on my block or on the cul-de-sac perpendicular to our street would end up in the local paper and we would have traffic at night until about 10 or 11 o'clock at night just making the rows circuit. just lines of cars coming as far from as far away as san fernando valley mm -hmm. to see our street go you know park their car wherever they could yeah. get a place to park and they would walk up into the cul-de-sac because the two houses that made number one and number two were up on the cul-de-sac and they were usually in competition with one another. <laughs> so our house and like the two houses over there and the one across the street from me and the one, two houses down from me all had like a pretty good, a fair, a fair yeah. light show. To, we had, we had to view, one so. that mm -hmm. ended up in the paper every year and the owners would dress up like Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus. And they had, it was one of those houses that was set back off the street mm -hmm. So the entire yard, the roof, everything, the entire oh, yeah. house, everything yeah. was, and it was before the animatronic stuff was really big. Mm -hmm. um, they'd have a couple of things that were moving, but it was just, it wasn't, it didn't look like Walmart threw up on their yard. It didn't have like everything, oh, no. but it was really tastefully it's, done. It's, or, it's organized. Very artfully done. And yeah, yeah it's, it's organized. Gorgeous. It's as if, it's, it's, and we as used if to go every year. laid it out according to, their, oh yeah. Well, their, I'd be their, I'd be kind of anal like that. I'd be drawing charts up and going, "Okay, we need to put this here." No, have it help when light goes out. It looked like they had. <laughs> oh, people used to do that. They no. used to just pull the. Yeah, well, it used to be that you the other strands you could actually it wouldn't take out the whole strand. It would just be one light would go. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think those were actually the unsafe ones originally long time ago then, when they when they used to be on the series circuit on if you pulled the one out like like the ones that are in our bedroom yeah those really so we actually really have tiny Christmas lights those, <laughs> around those our really window tiny lights that we leave up not all the year. big bulbs but the one tiny the set of tiny lights yeah. you know you we pull one of them out and like actually. the whole string of a hundred <laughs> yeah no <laughs> Says my son hasn't gotten to do trick or treating. This will be the third trick or treating season, and he has gone once when he was three months old. Yeah, it's. Ugh. I've seen um, people come up with ways to still do it. Like there's a there was one that I thought was really cool because um, I'm a Beetlejuice fan. They uh, <laughs> had done the black and white striped worm coming out of their second story window, and they were dropping trick or treat bags. Down the, down the shoot to the kids um, contact free yeah <laughs> it was great. well the same thing is it's like yeah if they're wearing a mask and they're wearing gloves when they put the bags together that's the other thing so but i know um you know there's little creature comforts like that you know i know there's still going to be kids going out trick-or-treating um here in berea we have like a safe path it's almost like there's a you know all the parents get together and and hang out with all the kids. Sometimes the parents will dress up, but they, the couple of years we went, um, you know, had like this circuit that they went um, specifically in Berea and everybody geared up for it. The one year though, that we did. And they're um, not out by a certain time, like after yeah. like 10 o'clock or something. There's yeah, it's not, out it's there. not even dark yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, not even dark yet. Um, which, kind of ruins it for me. I don't know. When we were kids, you know, you grab the when, flashlight. When I was a grab, kid, I would go by myself or with my best friend from school. Yeah. I'd be like eight years old, nine years old with like or like football helmet and a set of shoulder pads and a jersey. <laughs> and I'd go as a football player <laughs> with with a pillowcase and I would come home with that thing this full. Yeah. You know? And it was just, yeah, so much different. Yeah, we didn't do the pillowcase yeah. thing. We actually did the <laughs> like the, the plastic pumpkin or mm -hmm. the cauldron. Ninety yeah. percent of the time I would go like as a witch or something when I was an adult, just because it was easier and I had all the medieval gear <laughs> from the SCA. So you know let let him husband out with the PVC pipe candy shoot this year. 
<laughs> cool. You need to come up with something that's like those old, like the old, the old pool bazookas. So you can just fire the candy at the kids. <laughs> no. Here, here's your candy. <laughs> no, the, what was it? The toilet paper gun. Yes. The toilet paper gun. Yeah, that would work <laughs> too. Toilet paper launcher. <laughs> So we know the houses with back to up. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, the um gonna get those places this year and then come home to pass candy out with a shoot. Cool. I want uh, photos. Uh, you need uh, to send uh, me photos. Uh, um <laughs> let me link you guys to my Discord channel. Um I have a Discord community. Uh I started it when I started doing Twitch and we have active discussions on all sorts of stuff over there. Places to post photos and links for things and yeah, I've got, all kinds of I've things. got a spot Cooking for recipes, animal photos for mm -hmm. food, you know, food porn photo <laughs> stuff like that. Um, Halloween is coming up, so we've got all that. But uh, yeah, it's Ren's Warren because I'm my branding is all Moon Rabbit, so I went with the rabbit thing. And uh, so I will post that here if you guys want to join and join the discussion. We have all sorts of stuff going on. And I do a lot of announcements over there, uh, product launches too. So, but luckily he's young and won't want to do it too long. <laughs> yeah. The, um, when Issa got too old to trick or treat, which personally, if you ask me, you're never too old. <laughs> or at least to dress up. It's called cosplay now. Um, but, uh, we one of the last times that she went we actually went around instead of since she was too old but her godmother and our friends were like that's so sad that she's missing out well what do we do you know so we ended up doing something with four of the girls i think because it was so. becky the two girls there's at least three but I thought we went to five oh, moms would be four. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there was at least four different houses, but mm -hmm. because they weren't giving out candy to anybody else, they literally put together like baskets. Of, One of them it was kind of like, like going around and getting with... gift baskets. Yeah. She gave her like fashion stuff and some makeup. Fashion and, like and necklaces, accessory kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And purses <laughs> and you know, all sorts of stuff. So she got mm -hmm. like the hall because it was games, books, um, just, you know, stuff specific to her. She got a bunch of candy too. Handbag. Yeah. She got was one of lots of fashion stuff. <laughs> one wasn't, yeah. One, one friend of ours put it in a, put it in an actual purse mm -hmm. and everything. And um, bubbles, sidewalk chalk, um, I mean, just all sorts of stuff. <laughs> fashion jewelry, cosm uh, costume jewelry. Um, so she had a blast that year, but now it's like, I really want to cosplay. I want to give candy out to kids and it's driving me crazy that we can't. Um, I mean, even if we were able, uh, although we don't turn our front porch light yeah. on, on Halloween either, but we would probably get probably between four and eight kids probably yeah. would show up, would show up if the light was on maybe. Yeah. And the uh, one the one mm. tradition that I've seen uh, here, and they did this in Florida too, is the trunk or treat at the, oh, the that's, churches. Oh, those, those scare me. Those scare me. <laughs> Just the idea of here, come get candy out of the back of my car. <laughs> Flop. Thump. I get. Well, now I get and it. That, you that know, frightens parking, me. <laughs> parking lot. Just the whole no. premise of it was just like you know all I can mm -hmm. think of is the 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 white van with the free candy thing on the outside uh, of it. And I'm just uh, like, no, no, I just, no. I can't get past the visual. It's like, no, no. So, um, I mean, it's a good alternative. I understand why they do it. And especially now with COVID, but it's, it's just like trunk or treat. I don't know. It works for some people. <laughs> we were not one of them. Um, the, uh, 
um, there was two years. Do we do it for two years? I know we did it for one year. Um, we're part of the 501st. We're he's going to be Kenobi. I'm working on uh, at least, at least Hera. one year. I thought we did, but our Darth Vader for Lexington, um, his mom was a crossing guard, and we actually got to do uh, Halloween at their house and give out candy to the kids because she knew everybody. And oh my gosh, we had so much fun. But it was funny because here's here's the weird thing about Halloween is the kids will be terrified of him in the Darth Vader cosplay. But they'll walk up and give Freddy Krueger a hug. Or it. Or, like, we were at Scarefest. I think the one guy was dressed as Freddy. Yeah, and... but we were at Scarefest, and you had these guys with the white contacts and the stilts and the, I mean, just creepy. Or the scary clown with the big mallet. Butcher clown. And the kid walked right up to him and was and like. Just, and the kids are like, oh, hi, I want a hug <laughs> kind of thing. And I'm like. and then the, But they won't get anywhere near the, the stormtroopers or the, you know, Darth Vader. And I know the psychology behind it is that their face is hidden and that even though they're covered in mm -hmm. muck and everything else, you can still see their face mm -hmm. and their, their skin showing and they're more personable, but and I'm just like, okay, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'd more likely, well, well think, I'm a Star look at, Wars look geek, at Look but, at context too. Yeah. The only context some children have of Darth Vader is the prime the first three films yeah where he's this guy you know we can rule the galaxy as father and son you know and and you know he's that guy trying to justify to his son that no you i'm know, in the and right he cut here his kid's hand off so yeah so you know <laughs> well <laughs> that I'm came because he resisted you, but i sorry. mean <laughs> but but yeah so um <laughs> So you totally derailed on Halloween here. Um, I actually had a couple of things um, I wanted to bring up. I mm. just... Yes. Um, old movies. I'm a big fan of old movies. And I'm so thrilled to see Cyrano is coming out. And it's Peter Dinklage, who was in Game of Thrones. Most people know him as Tyrion Lannister. And um, he is playing Cyrano. And the one that I grew up on was the 1950 Jose Ferrer Ooh, version, which yeah. then they did, uh, Gerard Depardieu did it in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And then Steve Martin did Roxanne, which is based on Cyrano. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, had the long nose. I was showing Issa the clip of the insult scene. Love the comedy. In and that, though. it's great. Gosh, Steve Martin is amazing. <laughs> I've taken his um, class on comedy on master class. Mm -hmm. And it's, he's a really good instructor. He's a, yeah. a riot. Um, and he's an amazing banjo player. I would have oh. never, you know, I found that out years ago. and was just like, what? Man is brilliant. Um, but yeah, it was just... Um, I, I saw that though, and my heart skipped a beat. But we were watching the trailer for it, and East is just like, oh my gosh, that just hurts. I want to see that because it's just the way he plays it. Mm -hmm. And he's so expressive. Um, mm -hmm. And he just makes you just, he has that look on his face at one point, kind of when Issa did the pout when she was a baby, that's like, I, do you want a pony? I'll give you a pony. Just don't make that face anymore. You know, where it's just like, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Ta's mom knows exactly what I'm talking about. But, um, but it, of course it only works once, but, <laughs> but she was like eight months old. If that, I don't think she was even, even that old. And she did this pout that just, you know, I've worked with kids Broke, yeah. most of my life. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my gosh, just, you know, plunge the dagger in my heart. Um, but yeah, Logan and I were both like, <laughs> I was like, want a pony? What can I, what can I do? You want a pony? And we start doing all the, you know, silly stuff to try and get her to smile. But oh my gosh, yeah. But he, Peter Dinklage does that in the trailer and it's just like, Roxanne's an idiot. <laughs> you need to 
<laughs> people need to be falling at your feet. What is this? No, no, you're not allowed to be sad. And it is Peter Dinklage, who I absolutely adore anyway. Um, he was one of my favorite parts from Elf. So <laughs> call me up one more time. <laughs> he goes <sighs> running across the table. <laughs> I would not want to mess with that man either. He's an angry elf. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Will Ferrell. Um, Will Ferrell was actually, Ryan Reynolds, who plays Deadpool, was, has a TikTok. And him, he was doing this singing thing because he likes getting people to stitch the TikTok and sing with him or do different things. And Will Ferrell comes in on the last part of it, and Ryan can't keep a straight face. In, in falsetto. No yeah, less. in falsetto. It was brilliant. Um, Absolutely. It's so wrong. I'll, have to li I'll link it in the comments afterwards. But, um, and I hadn't, I hadn't really ever used TikTok. I had a couple of friends that would post to it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, our friend Holly did something brilliant with the one filter that mm -hmm. changes your gender. And she did uh, Evanescence, what's yeah. the song, where she, because I can, it's the one where, she, the video where she's like falling out of the building, um, Wake Me Up. Wake Me Up or. I can't remember the name of the song, but that's the, the main layer is Wake Me Up. Um, the, main and, line, the main line is Wake yeah, Me Up. Yeah, and Holly would yeah, get close to the camera, the so it would trigger the title. gender thing. And so she was doing a duet with herself as both genders. It was amazing. Um, but uh, I started using TikTok recently. I'm running million there, too. Um, I'm running million on literally everything except for Pinterest. Pinterest, I'm AM Salvaggio. But, and that's a rabbit hole and a half. Um, Pinterest is just surf worthy all day um but uh the um time lapses from when i'm drawing in procreate i found a use for them so i put those up on on tiktok now mm -hmm. i've gotten a few views i don't you know i'm fairly new to it so i haven't really been um you know other than that i don't post to it but there's been a couple of things that isa and i have seen that's like okay we need to do it a stitch with that we need to reply to that um so that's been fun but uh so cyrano is coming out excited for that um the other thing that i saw that caught my attention this past week was the coolest thing on the planet somebody 3d printed a cabin oh mm -hmm. but they took ash wood that was normally going to be burned and mixed it um they put it through a 3d scanner yeah. and the 3d scanner figured out where they could actually make the unusable wood usable and added it to 3d printed concrete and made a cabin out of it and i was just like dude that is so cool i'm trying yeah. to picture that now <laughs> yeah it's just um it looks like kind of like a tiny house, but um, let's see. I'll post the link to that. But yeah, it's just, it was pretty amazing because I love the whole idea of um, 3D printing the houses. And it's a cool little, it almost looks like a rocket. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Oh, and I mean, <laughs> wait me I, up before you go. Go, you got the uh, George Michael. Is that, I can be brown. I get a boot. I could be violet sky. Actually, purple. I could be hurtful. I could be anything. Like, yep. Yeah, that was. The <laughs> yep, one. yep. So that is the off-grid home made from three D printed concrete and infested wood. So they actually have it that. Infested. Um, and it's the weirdest architecture piece. It's really cool. But is, it's really beautiful. Is that a working fireplace? Yeah. Yeah. On that? It's actually. I um, like how they put it in the corner of yeah. the room, not like somewhere off the middle of mm. one of the panels. That's actually really cool. <laughs> yeah. It's. 
talk about saving space. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, inside the house. The floor is tilted or tiled with 3D printed concrete and ge geometric layers of the floor and fireplace to add texture. Um, it's the ashen house is what it's ashen. called. But basically it was this wood that was just going to be burnt. Um, this is usually infested ash trees are left to decompose or burnt. Um, which is carbon dioxide emissions, but using the irregularly shaped wood, they have like a double ecological purpose. It repurposes the wood with, that would otherwise be wasted and it binds the CO2 emissions to the earth. So they put like this weird shape log through a 3D scanner and the 3D scanner figures out where it can be cut so it's usable. Um, and the patterns in the wood are really cool too. So, but I thought that was a really neat way to mm -hmm. neat way to do that. Um, they're coming up with so many ways to use 3d printers, uh, here at the maker space. I'm on the founding board for the Bria maker space and we have mm -hmm. four 3d printers, one resin printer or three. No, we just got a fourth one, I think. Um, so pretty they, good size. Do they get those donated, or does someone buy them for, um, the, for the place and just leave them? I want to say Jess use, brought or? his from home. Uh -huh. Some people have bought their brought their own. They were donated, <clears throat> or people had them mm -hmm. and didn't have the space to use them at their home, or they just wanted to have them in the maker space. So as long as mm -hmm. You know, if you break it, you buy it kind of thing. I know certain ones are messier than others. And they contribute to, yeah. Um, um, and the resin printer, um, like when you got the minis, the D&D &D minis, the resin ones are a little more fragile. Yeah. So um, my thing is not necessarily 3D printing, but I'd really, really like to do the precious metal clay where it's mm -hmm. literally like you can get silver clay, you can mold it, you can do whatever you would normally do um, with clay, and then you put it in a mini kiln, and it burns off everything but the metal, so it's pure silver. Um, you can get different kinds of metals because they're all in the little beads, but it's mixed, mixed with clay, so you can mold it, sculpt it, do whatever. And there's <laughs> a lot of people that are doing jewelry. While it's still jewelry. not yeah. heated and... Temporary. Yeah, okay. yeah. So you use it like regular clay, but when it burns off, it's pure metal afterwards. Yeah. So because I'd love to do like custom jewelry and that kind of thing. Issa and I both were talking about it at one point. But um, but yeah, 3D printing houses is a thing now, and it's um more sustainable and it's um you know being able to to design and print a house is just kind of cool. <laughs> hmm. uh, the other kind was um, there was a family on YouTube that they actually post their stuff um, that came up with a really cool idea for building their own home. And it's the, um, it's almost like these bags of concrete or the bags of sand in these coils and you just coil it up and then flush it out with concrete. Um, but instead of building one big house for them and their kids, they had like a little community garden and a fire pit in the center. And they had one main house that had um, the kitchen, you know, yeah. bathroom showers and that kind of thing. Um, and then each kid had their own individual house. So their room was a house and uh, one of them liked astronomy and had a telescope. So they built him a little part that had a, a jet out seeking, you know, like a little extra room. And he had his space upstairs where he could go with the telescope view mm -hmm. um, viewing platform. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, and it was so cool because the kids are learning self-sufficiency independence they're, you know, they have their own space. Conservation. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, afterwards and they decide to move out into a regular, regular place, you know, mm -hmm. that's instant Airbnb. <laughs> right there. It, <laughs> it makes some money off of that. It's... But, and that'd be great for art retreats and that kind of, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, 
the only art retreat I've ever actually gone to that was like a paid retreat was um, 2012. Yeah, 2012, because I got diagnosed with the pulmonary embolism from the flight a year and a half later. Um, so 2012, and I'd gone to Maryland and they had an, there was an organic farm. They had kind of like an Airbnb set up. And then there was a separate house that was all studio with the glass all the way around it mm -hmm. um, on three sides. And then the back section was all like storage and everything, but it was all tables laid out for art and everything it was wonderful. But mm -hmm. Issa and I would love to have something like, like that or a space. Um, we still want to do the bookstore idea, but between, between you and I and our book, <laughs> our bookstore, bookstore experience and her with her baking and everything. But uh, I, I figured that's what you meant. <laughs> I'm, I'm fluent in typo. So, <laughs> but do you guys have any questions? We're just sitting here kind of rambling, um, which is more than likely what our, our coffee with panda is going to be, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll have we'll have, have a, a few things. Yeah, I've got a yeah. list of different things that I see yeah, that just you know kind of cool. Yeah. But we'll as we get going and start developing a, a following, we'll have more conversations about different things and it's just good to connect with people. Um we used to do a, a Zoom meetup uh once a week and I think I'm gonna start doing that again because I miss my brown coats. Um for those that don't know, I'm the uh, captain of the Kentucky Browncoats, and uh, we used to do bowling once a month and board game night once a month in person. Haven't been able to do it for two years, and it's just been, I'm having withdrawals from my crew. Mm -hmm. um, we did board game night a couple of times after we were cleared, but um, then the whole state went red, and we are just like, nope. Okay, it's not safe, not doing it. Uh, we did do our five-year anniversary and did a screening of Serenity at one of the drive-ins, though. Um, was that? It was before our anniversary. Yeah, it was about, a, what, two weeks two or weeks so ago? before? No, was it about a week or two before our anniversary? Yeah, or, I think so. I think I'm trying to remember the date now. Oh, 23rd. Third. Yeah, we did yeah. it on yeah, the 23rd. Yeah, it was a week before. Yep. Yeah, we did it on the 23rd. But um, mm -hmm. we had a blast with that. I had never gotten to see Serenity on the... I'd seen her on the big screen, but I had not seen her on drive through And that was fun. Um, although the screen, the drive through, drive through seemed like it was smaller than the one in the theater. But I know that's Could not true. That couldn't be. I mean, it could, I mean, have, been, it could have been how far away we were parked from the screen. Smaller drive that's yeah. possible. So I'm not sure, but we're definitely going to do something else like that. And the drive-in theater owner was like, hey, let's do some more stuff. And I'm like, okay. So I might start back up with uh, Watch Movies Do Good, uh, which was me producing movies out of the Kentucky Theater, which the Kentucky mm -hmm. Theater finally got a new management group. So mm -hmm. they are opening in December, and I'm ecstatic. Won't be able to go, but... <laughs> Um, but they have a small gallery there too, actually. And I talked to Fred about putting some of my work in there. So okay. we may end up having a gallery showing over at the Kentucky theater in Lexington. So that'll be kind of cool, but, but we're going to round out and thanks for listening to mostly me ramble. I was <laughs> getting the hang of it, but uh, it was good to see you. Toss mom. Keep in touch, join, join the discord and uh, pop in and let's keep the conversation going, but uh, I'll make a channel in there for the podcast. Um, if I don't already have one, I think I have one already. Um, you would know, I would not. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I will make one about the podcast and you guys can post different topics and all that. So I will add that in right now. I have been writing a lot, but yeah. not writing, but not writing really fiction. I've been, I didn't want to push. I didn't know if you wanted to <laughs> no, talk well, about I mean, that. It's just, it's just D and D campaign 
scenario stuff for putting together a, a thread. Uh, got five, five encounters that get you to like a main town, like a small port town on this, the ocean, on this, on the ocean. And, and then from there, the people that you meet have something that if you ask them, they can tell you what, uh, you know, what's going on and what they need help with. And then the plot threads spread out from there in four or five directions. And there's two or three people that you either have been in contact or have not yet that I've also added that there are either rumors about or there are people you've interacted with in a negative way that can lead to being uh, the negative influences, the antagonists in the town also that you can choose to interact with or not. So, yeah. Okay, so that is podcast is up in the general section up there. So that has been made. So if you guys have any questions, you find really cool stuff you want us to talk about, you can toss it in there and I'll flush that channel out a little bit. But um, but for now, we are at 10 o'clock and I kind of almost want to do this for two hours, but we have classes and stuff and he's got a, a class he's teaching at 12. Uh, our links to everything are down in the description. Um, let us know what you think. I know we've got to work on um, settings. We got to put my back, fix my backdrop on the one side <laughs> is drooping. Um, we got to pin it up further on the other side. Oh, I kind of tucked is? it. Yeah, I tucked it behind the. I tucked it behind the bookcase on that side. Usually, I don't go that far over to that side when I'm doing stuff, so I had to fold it out. But anyway, thank you guys so much for being here. Stay well, stay safe, wear your mask, wash your hands, and Mama said so. Mama said. <laughs> but you guys take care and suggest coffees and stuff for us to try too, because we'll do that. But mm -hmm. so we'll see you Thursday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time next week. And in the meantime, I will be on Twitch. My next stream is uh, Saturday at noon, and we'll be doing artsy, craftsy stuff, uh, most likely probably watercolor and working on some children's book illustrations. So if you want to come chat and hang out, the link is below. And we will see you guys later. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>